Welcome to the Total Connector Show, another special sub series called Limitless Rabbit Hole with my regularly reoccurring co host, uh, Tip or Thibaut Marechal. What a beautiful name! Sounds so poetic. <laughs> Okay. Uh, highly unexportable. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> uh, so, Tip, uh, what's happening? I mean, I've I've, I've got so much. Um, I had two amazing interviews yesterday. My 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 head is a little bit imploding because it's so much stuff to do right now, um, and because um, I'm also planning to do like a, a media um, a project with a bunch of other people. To, to to a spectrum of other on on of other topics, uh, which are all interconnected somehow, you know, with money, with Bitcoin, with 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 this whole evolutionary yeah. potential that we have. So why don't you start out? Because I have so much in my head right now. I have a couple of topics that I want to talk to you about. But what's been going on lately? What do you think? Uh, yeah, many things. Uh, definitely, you know, listen to, I was on, on the bus this morning listening to, uh, Stefan Levera and, uh, and his, uh, recent podcast with Chris Mayer. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think the proof of keys, um, movement is, uh, is shaping up quite nicely for, for the, the coming uh, January 3rd, which is exciting. Um, so we're seeing, him appear on a bunch of different podcasts and i I've, I've seen the proof of key like the little icons that people now put in their handles on twitter um so that is pretty uh it's pretty cool uh event happening um really looking uh towards helping a few friends who actually bought uh bitcoins on 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 custodial exchanges that left the bitcoins over there and they reached out and they were like hey you know We've heard of that because we're following you and we're like, okay, how, how do we do this? Right. Uh, is there, uh, is there anything in particular? What hardware wallet should I use? Or, you know, like really, you know, really practical concerns. Uh, when it, it basically, it means that now not only thinking about it, they're actually planning on doing it. Uh, so it's becoming real. So that that's I think is uh, it's pretty cool, uh, and there's you know even compared to last year, there's so much more um, documentation online. You know this uh, this resource, uh, I think it's Bitcoin-intro.com, which really gives a comprehensive guide in terms of how to use Bitcoin. Um, so not only the sort of like overview on, on the, on the protocol and all that, which are extremely valuable, but actually the, the practical guide in terms of, you know, running a full node or, you know, holding your own keys, the security models around that and so on and so forth. Um, let me ask you something. Yeah. Because I, I, I listened to the interview, uh, uh, of Trace Maya on Stephen Levieris today in the morning was the first thing I did. And, uh, the proof of keys concept, you know, and the ID, the initiative, uh, I guess it was initialized by Trace Meyer is a great thing. I, I find it wonderful because he's actually, as far as I know himself, a uh, partial or, you know, a ma majority shareholder of Kraken, which to be honest with you, I'm a user of Kraken. I'm a huge fan of Kraken because there were always, you know, I had the feeling there were always, uh, they've always been uh, top notch when it comes to security updates, ethos, um, the only problem I have, I'm going to, you know, not circumvent this whole topic is this whole altcoin shitcoinery on the exchange. I don't get it because on the one hand there, uh, you know, a lot, you know, not only trace my, because all, all these other people who are working for Kraken, such as Dan held are preaching, uh, you know, uh, water <laughs> and about Bitcoin and about the ethos of Bitcoin. But then on the other hand, um, uh, somebody's got to be the, the bag holders of all these shit coins on the, you know, so, uh, you know, my, that's the, the essence of, of my, my preaching is ethos. And if I, if I cannot stick to my own ethos that I'm preaching, then I'm not good for it, you know? So this is the problem I have. I'm not going to, you know, lie about it. It's my honest opinion. I don't care, you know, but I'm going to just say it. And, and yeah, and that's and, brilliant. I, this, I mean, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. No, no. And and just one more thing, and uh, what the proof of keys concept is concerned. Anyway, 
um, and I've said that, I mean, why, why wait, why not, you know, uh, create awareness and consciousness in the minds of the people who are, who've been buying and, and, and literally storing their, their Bitcoin on an, uh, on an, on an exchange. Why not do it immediately? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, you know, pull this, uh, pull this thing off, you know, like, like a birthday or Christmas thing. Like we need to wait for a, for a specific date. Why January 3rd? Why, why can't you tell people do it as soon as possible? Do it immediately. So I agree with that sentiment and that's a, an ideal world that I would love us to all live in. Now, the reality is, look, people are busy and and we spoke about this before, but you know, most of my friends who now own a little bit of Bitcoin, they do not have the time or did not take the time because they didn't see it as a priority up until now to actually look into the practical reality of holding your own Bitcoin keys. And so it's much easier to just delegate that to a trusted third party. And that's what people do mostly for I would speculate a majority of Bitcoins that are currently available for, for hodling. They sit on exchanges. And so, you know, the, the thing that Trace Mayer did, this proof of key event, it, it really is interesting in terms of building habits and rituals for the community. And you can basically build a, a much stronger, sticky narrative around that, which I think Bitcoin is, we're full of rituals already. And I was briefly speaking with uh, Gigi about this last time on Twitter, like this, uh, all, all these rituals, like, you know, whether it's the pizza day that we have, whether it's that, well, January 3rd, now proof of keys and also the anniversary of Bitcoin, um, celebrating the release of the white paper on the 31st of, of October, uh, you know, all these events. And so proof of key is just one of them. Again, it's part of that. It's building the, a ritual into the Bitcoin block height calendar. Right. And so new Bitcoiners, uh, will learn that I assume and, uh, and will then preach it to other people. So in terms of, uh, I would say like, you know, narrative distribution, it's pretty efficient, but for sure, like ideally everybody should, should do it right away. And I think what's happening is once you've done your first proof of key, um, then you're more, much more inclined to actually do it all the time. Once you purchase Bitcoin on a, on a custodial exchange, right? Uh, yeah. And on that note, I think it'd be really exciting also for, um, services who provide custody as, as a service companies that provide custody as a service to actually participate in that as well. Like not again, like this, this notion that everyone should hold their own keys. And I agree with that, but for the players who can't really do that, then the counterparties providing that service should also prove that they have the assets that they, that they claim to have. And ideally they should also prove that their liabilities meet those assets. So it includes a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a more of a sophisticated like financial statement auditing for that, that part and making sure that you, those two things match. Um, that, that would be exciting. Um, and the reality right now is we don't like, we don't see that. Right. Okay, let let me top that with a with a you know I think it's an I don't even think it's an original idea, but wouldn't it be awesome to top that with a proof of what would you call it proof of bank run? Like on that same day on January third, people are going to withdraw the Bitcoin to the hardware wallet, and at the same time on that same day on January third, go to the bank and withdraw. I don't know, three quarters of the fiat and put it like we could start with the Bitcoin community. Like we could do that literally. What if we all went to the bank and say, where's our money? Dude, I have nothing in my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Not even petty uh, cash for your, for your daily expenses because, you know, we're still living of in course, these crazy of course. times. I, you know? I still have a you know, little bit of dirty fiat, but that float is thin. Uh, and... I mean, sh you know, sure. But th the thing is with cash, cause it, 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 
it devalues, like the incentive is less interesting, right? This notion that sure, you, you, you get your cash and the bank, definitely if everybody were to do that, the reality is like they, most banks would, would fail. Because I think the, the average leverage for these banks is in the 15 to 20 X, right? So for every dollar that they have in their custody, quote unquote, uh, you know, there's 20 claimable IOUs on that mm -hmm. top, which is insane. But anyway, we know that. Uh, but I mean, it, it, it's happening out of necessity, unfortunately, bank runs. And I think that's what uh, Trismir was covering on the podcast with Stefan Devera speaking about uh, Rothbard, who was actually a big proponent of that, of, of, uh, of coordinated bank runs. Right, right. Uh, and I don't know if you remember, but a few months ago now, the Yellow Vest in France um, tried to do a few of those. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. bank runs. I didn't um, know that. Okay. Most people, most people know that it's a leverage, and I think it, it is something that unites people. This notion that if we are getting together to sort of claim our monetary sovereignty in a way by getting physical cash, even though cash is still, uh, you know, the fiat is still against monetary sovereignty. It's still on the spectrum of monetary sovereignty. It's, I would. I would say perhaps a bit better than getting, you know, negative interest rate charged onto your account. Um, like the new chairman of the ECB, Kristen Lagarde is uh, oh advising. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a movement that that's been happening. And I wonder if it's going to, if it's truly going to happen because, you know, if, if something on a on a scale large enough were to happen, let's say in, in European banks, I mean it can quickly spread to a bunch of countries, and then uh, and then it becomes a, a big issue because bank runs in the end it, it it creates chaos, right? Yeah. Same same for same for proof of keys. I mean, last year there's been a you know this exchange had a, had an issue. I forgot the name. Um, and now I saw on Twitter this morning, HitBTC, apparently, which is a yeah. massive exchange. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've had, you know, their clients had issues withdrawing. And there's this poor Russian guy who was uh, tweeting about it. And he's got roughly $160,000 worth yeah. of Bitcoin on there. I and oh you just God. can't, can't see any of it. And it's yeah. been, he's been waiting for two weeks. Contacted customer support, no answer, no nothing. I mean, it's, uh, it's crazy. Because, yeah, if, if you really think about what exchanges are, if you leave your coins over there, they're basically banks with no standards, no regulatory oversight, mm -hmm. no FDIC insurance. So they're the riskiest counterparties that we've right. seen in a long time. Um, so... Yeah, I, proof of keys is is really great, and uh, I'll I'll be one of the preachers of that to my uh, to my friends in the, in the days to come until until we get there. It's only in uh, 23 days, I think, 22 days. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's we're getting uh, pretty close to it. What day is that? That is, uh, let me see. What day is that? Um, January third is um, Friday. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean my time uh yeah so interesting um well the thing is you know i, I was just thinking it would it would really send a, a really strong message uh, to everybody else you know to to the outside world uh you know who who, are, who haven't uh, been red pilled yet <laughs> like do this in synchronicity you know you withdraw your bitcoin you know you you make a tabula rasa on your exchange uh, you're clean and safe on your hardware wallet and at the same time, whatever, I mean, maybe not literally like withdraw the money from your, but at least like do a, like you, you withdraw some, some fiat to your, to your, to your Bitcoin exchange or something like that, you know? So I thought that it would be, you know, a, a cool event. Uh, it would, would be a multi multiplier, uh, but I don't know. It's just the way I imagine things maybe. <laughs> Like a yeah, a, a bundled stack, yeah, stacking sad day, yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Um, okay, so the other stuff I want to talk to you about is um, did you did you listen to the whole interview with Trace Meyer? I haven't had I haven't finished it yet. Okay, but did you get to the point where he started talk, start talking about coin joining? Where he's... not not on this one, but I've heard Trace Meyer speak about coin joins uh, yeah. in other podcasts. So yeah, essentially, he's saying. Wimble. Yeah, essentially saying it's it's a risky thing to do. It's not good. It's highly dangerous or whatever. I mean, paraphrasing him, um, it's uh, it's definitely not good for your privacy because if you're coin joining and you might, I mean, I don't know, is that really the probability that you're coin joining somehow? First of all, if I mean they can unwind this whole thing. I mean, I, I'm not a technical. I'm you know I, I'm not a crypto, but could they literally like unwind uh, coin joining trans uh, transactions which could theoretically be tied to a potential or alleged terrorist in North Korea? This is something he said. So I mean, I was like, okay. I mean, uh, and then Stefan, Stefan at the end said, you know, in his monologue, he said, well, he's still a fan of CoinJoin because it will keep a base layer of, you know, sort of a, a basis of, of privacy. You can still preserve a, a basis of your, for privacy. What do you think about coin join and coin mixing? Um, I think different layers of, uh, of this protocol stack ought to optimize for different trade-offs and realities. And A, uh, as we've discussed and as most people know, the base layer needs to have that uncompromising verifiability and, and immutability of data. So the immutability of data is irrelevant in that discussion but the verifiability is. And so for a system to be verifiable, you need transparency and you need to be able to audit it. And that's what full nodes do on a regular basis. They audit the entire supply of Bitcoin and they audit the transaction and data integrity of the ledger. Beautiful. You cannot have with the current technologies that are out there, privacy, technology at the base layer without a compromise, a trade-off being made on that verifiability. Unless we're speaking about Schnorr and Taproot, for instance, which brings you know, a decent amount of, techno of, of uh, privacy enhancing properties by, for instance, abstracting away the um, schemes in the send, spending of Bitcoin UTXOs. You don't know if you know three people sign on that transaction or if it's one, like all of that is abstracted away. So that is a, a great privacy enhancement. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, just to interrupt you, sir. I think that was then afterwards what Trace Mai was, was subsequently arguing about that it would be, yes, it would be cool if it would then, you know, the, you could enhance the privacy on the second layer or lightning network, you know, with all the, you know, Schnorr, Taproot, all these technologies on top of that. Even Mimble Wimble he talked about. So that's why I wanted really to have your take. Like, is it? Mimble Wimble, they had an issue recently. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, it testifies to the risk of deploying uh, confidentiality and privacy focus tech in the base layer. And coin joins again, I believe personally that they work extremely well today if you do them properly, especially in post mixing UTXO reconsolidation. So if you remix UTXOs that you had mixed in different rounds, then sure you can like basically you break the anonymity anonymity set. Um, but now that that being said, um, coin joints there it's mathematically proven. Chomian coin join technology, if you go beyond a certain set of anonymity, it is not traceable. And when you speak to blockchain analysis companies, they will tell you two things. We can't track Lightning Network routing, and we cannot track coin join mixing. That testifies to the efficiency of those two technologies, which appeared on layers on top of Bitcoin base there. So, you know, 
we and we've looked at you know conventional transactions, the stuff that Blockstream deployed on Liquid, another uh, second layer privacy enhancing technology that is making all the trade offs like it's a federated chain, so it requires trust and it is te technically censorable. So, and also confidential transactions on the technical side, they take twice as much storage, you know, in terms of bytes per mm -hmm. transaction. So on the base layer, again, that wouldn't work because you would double the rate increase in terms of storage requirements for the, the blockchain. And therefore the full nodes would need to be much stronger in terms of hardware, in terms of bandwidth, and therefore you basically affect the uh, censorship resistance of Bitcoin and its decentralization. So again, unacceptable, cannot happen, will not happen, hopefully. And that's why privacy enhancing tech should exist on second layers. Now, going back to coin joins, truly believe that coin joins will be a, an attack surface for Bitcoin UTXOs in the future, meaning that I could totally see, um, and that's a very speculative opinion of mine, but that's what we're here for. <laughs> I could totally see um, coin join mixing services and um, the UTXOs that were from those those uh, coin joins because again it's pretty easy when you look at the blockchain uh, the, at the if you do like forensic analysis like it's pretty easy to see like when a UTXO comes from a coin join and these could basically be rendered tainted or or treated as illegal bitcoins in a way by all exchanges and all. Um, custodial services that are by default regulated businesses that are supervised by jurisdictional specific agencies in the form of, you know, whether they're fall under MSB license requirements or, or any other type of, of uh, regulatory requirements that, that would make sense in that particular jurisdiction. And so I could totally see in the future, these Bitcoins, being traded on a perhaps a black market of UTXOs that are coin joined and that are truly fungible, but within that excluded sub segment. Um, and I think in the future it oh. will matter, but there, there will be a short term, I got you. medium term. Yeah. I got you. Attack. Okay, now okay, no, now I'm making the connection because trace mice. I have to re-listen to that. Maybe I'm, I'm curious. Maybe what you're gonna say next time once you finish listening to it, because I maybe he maybe he meant because at the end he said, uh, well they could do this in the future or something like that. They could you know un, uh, like track it or whatever un find out. Like whatever, like, I mean, you could then allege everybody, you know, being a being a terrorist, a criminal, and all of this shit. I mean, when when the shit really, uh, you know, hits the fan, uh, in a in a Aurelian nightmare. But this is, I'm already thinking ahead, you know. So maybe he's, maybe yeah. he he maybe he meant in the future, not now, because as you said, like like if you if you uh, talk to this te te technology specialists, like like what do you call it, like blockchain companies. They cannot yeah. trace it back, right? So they cannot unwind this. They at can't. this moment, at this moment, like now. At this moment, but uh, yeah. And, and that's the beauty of, of, of mathematical proofs is mm -hmm. that even if you scale the amount of computation that you can deploy on a given problem, whether it is to you know, reverse irreversible SHA-256 mm -hmm. functions, for instance, or in the case of CoinJoin, try to sort of somehow retrace those untraceable uh, UTXOs. I mean, you still are bound by math proofs that testify that, again, even if you're putting a lot of money and very creative extremely efficient technologies, um, there is a theoretical limit that cannot be reached today unless we have a massive change in the current computational you know, paradigm, like 
quantum computing, and you know, I know we speak a lot about this in the Bitcoin community. Uh, and even so, maybe with quantum computing, I, and I, again, this is where I'm, I'm reaching my, the limit of my technical literacy for, for that, but how breakable is CoinJoin technology when it comes to uh, the impossibility of, of traceability? Mm -hmm. that, that would be a good, uh, a good research paper to read or write. I, I, maybe it's out there. I haven't seen it yet. Um, and I actually, I will look into it, but I think for now, at the moment, we're not, it's not a risk at all. Uh, will it become a risk in 10, 15 years? Maybe, but I'm quite certain that by then we'll have other technologies that should, if necessary, replace the function of coin joins in terms of making Bitcoin UTXOs fungible. Right. Okay. Do you have an opinion? Uh, on the difference between your your personal experience on the difference between uh, uh, Wasabi's coin join and Samurai's Whirlpool. I mean, from your experience, is there yeah. because there's a you know a really hardcore discussion constantly fights <laughs> going on, and uh, you know I, I just lean back and to, for me personally Wasabi I I just deinstalled it because it was too complicated for me because. I don't know, maybe because also of the uh, the beginning of the, you know, the, the, the bugs, the, the updates I had to do and, and yeah. too many yeah. functions. It's, it's not for the average. And I, I consider myself as an average user. <laughs> That's why I switched them to summarize Whirlpool and tested it. It's way, way easier, to be honest with you. Way easier. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no free lunch. And I would say with convenience, welcome trade-offs. Now it's a part of you know defining your security model and the threat model you're optimizing for and and based on the set of trade-offs that are openly available to you make you can make a decision right that is sort of as objective and enlightened as possible for me what wasabi is is the wallet that i i've been using it it is a good product mm -hmm. it requires a bit more research and uh, Max Hillebrin, for instance, shout out to, to Max, uh, mm -hmm. has done awesome tutorials on this. Definitely. Uh, there's a lot of content around Wasabi that makes it easy to use if you spend uh, you know, a little bit of time to sort of like research it. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a great wallet. Uh, it, it, as, a, as a desktop wallet, it's a good, it's a good wallet. Uh, but it is very expensive in terms of a like coin yeah. join yeah. you know the rounds yeah. they mm -hmm. cost a lot of sats yeah uh if you want to do uh because now a if you want to mix let's say you have to mix it's a uh, 0.1 btc usually and usually now rounds of coin joins are a hundred in terms of the anonymity set so, and it's 0.003% per uh, a non-set, which, you know, makes it 0.3% for that UTXO. And which is, you know, uh, it, it's a lot of stats in the end. And perhaps we'll look back in 10 years and be like, oh my God, I spent, you know, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of money on that, on privacy. I, I still believe privacy is, is, is completely underrated in terms of um, like value, right? The value that it, it gives to, to someone, to families, to, to, in terms of protection and of defense, super, super important. Uh, and the reality is like, you may be paying all these fees on Wasabi and like leak uh, because you've like mixed a, you know, non coin join UTXO with a mixed UTXO or somehow you like reconsolidated UTXOs post mixing or there's a lot of mistakes that uh, a user can do uh, when trying to be private on Bitcoin. Like being private using Bitcoin is completely possible, but it is still extremely hard. And now when it comes to your question uh, re related to Samurai versus Wasabi, I, I haven't used samurai because i've been advised not to and maybe that is again i should not trust 
necessarily the, the people who told me not to use it. I should verify it for myself. And I, I've, I mean, I've seen the product uh, on other devices that it, it looks, that weren't mine. It looks great. Um, the, the, the product experience looks to be a bit more accessible to the average user, as you were saying. Uh, but for instance, the, the fact that they were leaking user XPUBs when you were, you know, initiating the, 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 the dojo, uh, that XPUB was actually being sent to their servers is, a, is an issue because we're, we're doing privacy. We're like running the extra mile and educating ourselves and spending those sats and, and doing all these things for privacy. And somehow you're gonna leak like the most important piece of information, which is the XPUB. Screw but everything. Like leaks. <laughs> all <laughs> that wallet <laughs> history. <laughs> so sure, you can mix that all you want. Uh, it wasn't intentional. Like it, it wasn't. I hope it wasn't like it was really like a was it like a stupid mistake, a negligence, or what? What, what was it? I mean, a bug or? Uh, no, I, I believe they were doing that asking. by design uh, until they allowed people to self-host their uh, uh -huh. all the okay. wallet and the and you know and the node using the dojo. Uh, right. But again, I I I should perhaps stop here because I don't want to say things that are not hundred percent yeah, true that's and what accurate. I'm, yeah, that's what I want to prevent. And, and by the way, it's spread, but, yeah, yeah, and it's supposed, supposed to be to get better with um, if it's true with the mobile uh, mixing, you know, everything is going to, yes. it's going to be more user friendly, you know, more intuitive. So like, I mean, UX. this is amazing. Mobile mixing is amazing. Uh, and also oh. reducing the limit per, per round that per UTXOs that you have to commit to rounds, right? If you could mix 50 bucks worth of Bitcoins, amazing. Right. And if you could do it on mobile, uh, and it sort of even does it automatically whenever you wow, deposit. Wow. Yeah, that uh, would Bitcoins. be awesome. That would be right? awesome. Yeah. You don't, I mean, you don't even have to think about it. I mean, yeah. like that, I think is the that future. That would be the, such the, a relief right. for the average user out there, like to have it by default, enhancing your, you know, and protecting your privacy. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know? Oh yeah. No, so let's hope for that. Yeah. But it's not yeah, going to happen yeah. by Christmas. It's not going to happen by Christmas, I guess. <laughs> Sometime maybe no. next year or so, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who knows? So, what what what's next on the horizon? <clears throat> Tip. Uh, uh, Want to talk horizon. about Italy and Greece? The Orwellian nightmare, the op oppression of the people, the confiscation of people's uh, savings, whatever they have left in Italy and Greece. I mean, we're talking about the European Union. I mean, it's coming. It's right here. I mean, it's, I mean, Austria. I mean, it could happen any time because it's all tied together. You know, the European yeah. Central Bank, psychopaths. Yeah. So the, the war on, on cash is, is, really, um, is really scary. And the enforcement of it is even worse. I mean, the stuff that they're doing in Greece, yeah. um, where they're, punishing people who are not spending enough using digital means of payment it's insane yeah and don't forget I mean, germany and don't forget germany with their negative interest rates already on the first retail or saving deposit accounts in uh some of the german banks already negative right. interest i mean <laughs> this is crazy so it costs money right to uh, to to give it to the bank, it costs you money now. I mean, this is this is insane. Yeah, and and what's uh, yeah, what's interesting is that the banks um, they're still making money off that. Meaning commercial banks, because commercial right. banks in a negative interest rate policy environment are technically charged to leave their money or assets or collateral in the central bank's ledger. Like the central bank is charging negative interest rates, right? On the commercial banks. But the commercial banks in that scheme, they can still make money if the spread they take, you know, if the fees that they charge to their clients is bigger than the fee that they're paying to the central bank, which completely distorts the notion of, of money and capital markets and everything. It, it makes everything upside down, like a bit 
completely weird. Um, and and again, they're using those narratives in terms of like, yeah, you know, we're 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 storing your money for security, and so it makes sense for us to charge you a fee for that. Um, I mean, it, it it is completely immoral. Uh, it is pure theft, and it it really pisses me off, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but what what can we do? I mean. That's the only lever that the, the central bank, the European central bank has in terms of, uh, you know, stimulating the economy. Um, and they still, you know, if they want to meet their, their target of inflation and, and, and of roughly 2%, um, they got to keep on, on doing this. They got to stimulate those spendings, you know? <laughs> and so going under the, uh, the horizontal axis when it comes to interest rates, um, it does incentivize people to spend. Because you're like, holy shit, like I'm losing money in my bank account, might as well go and spend it uh, on Starbucks or on Walmart stuff. Oh, by the way, there's a huge uh, discount this weekend. I'll go there and buy a bunch of shit I don't need. Uh, you know? Uh, <laughs> it is forced consumerism is is so it's dramatic i mean it's it's uh and again you don't want to be like and i remember we spoke about this and you don't want to be the bit the cynical bitcoiner who's like oh my god the world is is uh is blowing up and and people are 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 poor because they're forced to consume and they're they're unhealthy because they're forced to eat fiat food and you know i, I think it's saifedean omus yeah. who, who <laughs> quoted that fiat Fiat Bosses food foods. for, for yeah. fiat currency, you know, <laughs> fiat art, fiat, fiat real estate. So yeah. again, another random rent in Montreal, there's a boom in real estate because it's one of the single city in Canada that hasn't been affected too, too much with real estate inflation, mm -hmm. when it, whether it's like just the price of real estate or rent costs. Mm -hmm. And so it's still pretty affordable. And now you're seeing this explosion of perishable real estate in a few neighborhoods close to downtown, which is called Griffintown, where you see you had these beautiful post-industrial buildings and warehouses, you know, brick wall, super thick stone built walls, like solid stuff that was built to last. And now you're seeing these glass made buildings with very cheap materials um, that look like they're already leaking their colors or that basically don't seem that they're going to last too, too long. And they're not even finished to be built. Oh my God. This is total misallocation and high time preference investment building shit well exactly it's like because there's there, there are government subsidies for real estate investment mm -hmm. uh and the you know the, the the firms deploying capital in that market they're looking to make a profit in the next what five years maybe so they have their cash flow model they get those subsidies uh from the government and they build those things because they're like social uh housing for instance and they build something really shitty, low quality, whatever, get their return back very shortly. And then they exit their positions. They made their, you know, yearly compounded, what, 10%, 7% interest uh, return. And, and then they're gone and they don't care about the rest, right? And then the city will have to deal with this in 20 years when this thing is like collapsing and they have to basically, you know, tear it down and rebuild it again. And Keynesians will say, yeah, but it's good. We're creating jobs and we're stimulating the economy. <laughs> and like, that's the, you know, it's the broken window fallacy, right? This notion that, oh yeah, sure. You can just rebuild on stuff that was crappy in the first place. I mean, well, but all these dollars you're allocating there will not be allocated elsewhere where they could have been way more productive. Uh, so anyway, it's funny that Bitcoin allows us to build those mental models mm -hmm. so that then you can apply those filters around you 
and you realize, damn, this is real. You know, we speak about, yeah, high time preference real estate is a thing. Uh, for food, it's the same thing, man. I mean, I've been personally experimenting with intermittent fasting or like mm -hmm. multiple day fasting, and it's hard. Uh, and I don't want to be, you know, the cliche like Bitcoiner or Silicon Valley bro who does fasting and brags about it. But at the same time, it's, it really is, again, a very real um, gratification delay and, and low time preference. And you realize the benefits that you get from it versus going to Starbucks in the morning, getting a little croissant at 9 a.m. and then eating a little snacks in the office at 11 a.m. and then going for lunch at 12.30 and then having another coffee break at 3.00 and eating a few biscuits, you know, like I used to do that and I felt like garbage. Yeah. I, know. I was, you know, yeah. I had anxiety, You're exhausted, tired, and you burnt exhausted. out, you literally physically burnt out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your sleep is fucked up, you know? Uh, and yeah. you know, like uh, diet, nutrition, health, wellness, you know, it's such an individual th process. You know, if you go really deep into it, you know, yeah. because there is, th that's why not everybody, you know, it maybe is made for, because I, I was like vegan for six, seven years, uh, many years ago, six or seven wow. years, I was vegan, like from one day to another. And then, you know, uh, for many years now, I started eating because maybe of all this, you know, uh, uh, low time, uh, logical and, and, and really scientific based uh, 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 Bitcoin science sort of, you know, you, I started eating meat again, you know, it's, it's funny, but it's, it's really individual journey also with fasting and how you, you know, I, I'm trying to like quit coffee. It's, it's, you know, cause it does, it, it's not good for me. I, I feel it. It's not good for me. Oh man, that's going to be a hard one for me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you need some caffeine. I know it's work, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, and, and that's the other thing I, so I've been embracing new like stoic lifestyle attributes, I would say more and more. And I truly see like a benefit, whether it's placebo effect or it's real, I don't mind it's working. And um, it really requires uh, self-discipline because now I, I think with fiat currency, uh, we live in a world of abundance, abundance of food, abundance of, uh, you know, money, abundance of sex, abundance of everything. And sex, I mean, the bad one, like porn and all this. And then so um, it's really hard to, embrace the opposite like you know scarcity like seeing fewer people but building deeper relationships doing less busy tasks in your work but actually focusing on the stuff that truly matter uh and and i feel like again bitcoin allows you to connect all these dots and i, I yeah you just like realize holy shit by being disciplined and and artificially constructing scarcity around things, around a world of abundance and, and, and just crazy amount of, of things available at all times. You know, another thing, Netflix and shows, right? It's another thing of abundance. Like we're, we basically, we're fed with abundance today and, and abundance brings comfort in a way because you don't have to worry about anything. Things come to you. And it feels good, but that's short term. Long term, you get you get hit with diseases if you're you know having abundance of food, or mental health issues if you have abundance of you know not doing exercise and sitting on your sofa and like eating stuff and watching shows and not seeing people. I, it's funny because all these models they really tend to align pretty well together and you realize that you know hard money which is a scarce money which is valuable uh only exists because of proof of work right and we, we've spoken about this at great length and this is because you have proof of work which is protected by the law of thermodynamics which is like you can't create energy out of nowhere it has to utilize 
bunch of different inputs. And those inputs come from the real world, quote unquote, the real material world that is bound by the laws of physics and chemistry. Uh, that proof of work also is true for all things that are valuable in one's life, meaning a healthy body, you know, a six pack that you've been dreaming of. <laughs> well, that thing is proof of work. You can't get it like that. You can't pay for it. You can't get it easily. It's actual discipline and work. And that's the same thing for, for relationships and whatnot. So I don't know, this is completely a random stream of consciousness, but I, I've been thinking uh, more and more about this and with, uh, with a really good friend of mine, Antoine, shout out to Antoine, who, um, uh, who's also, who's brought me on that path of stoicism. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's uncomfortable, but it's extremely rewarding medium to long term. Great, great tip. Yeah, that was, uh, that was random. <laughs> that, no, that was good. That was good. That was, uh, I, I find it good to wrap this up. Um, so I really enjoyed this tip. Um, let us repeat this uh, next week. Uh, we'll have a couple more uh, different topics and, um, you know, brainstormings by next week. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for your brainstorming and your, you know, your input. That's great, awesome, man. Great Thank co-host. You so much. You are, uh, you're a great co-host. Yeah, I, I love these uh, these uh, completely random uh, streams of consciousness. They're great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so with that, uh, yeah, I would just want to wish you a happy weekend. Enjoy your weekend, Tip. Yeah, have a great weekend as well. Take care, man. And uh, see you next week. See you next week. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao. All right. So that was another limitless rabbit hole talk recap with my co-host Tib or Thibaut Maréchal. I uh, really enjoy these talks because, you know, we can go a little bit outside the box, go, you know, within the spectrum of all, uh, you know, relevant topics that are interconnected uh, within and around Bitcoin. So please, um, if you love this, if you love these talks, share them, like them, subscribe to my channel, YouTube channel, podcast channels, whatever you have. Give me a positive review on, on Apple, iTunes, and any, any other podcast platform. Give me a five-star rating if you can, if you loved it. Um, and um, yeah, thank you so much for support. By the way, if you are an ethical sponsor, uh, somehow connected to Bitcoin, ethical sponsor, please get in touch with me. I'm looking for a sponsor. Um, I would prefer one or two, you know, prime uh, co-sponsors um, and uh, so I can you know do these interviews these talks uh, with professional equipment live uh, at those places where I'm where we travel to like I would love to go now to Uruguay where this you know uh, um, Bitcoin conference and um, uh, or whatever it's called the, the conference where Andres Antonopoulos also is speaking taking place so I would love to go these places and really have face-to-face personal talks with with um with these um really beautiful minds uh such as andreas antonopoulos um and you know and and bring you more content more more high quality content whether it be video uh, a high quality video or high quality audio interviews with my professional equipment but un until then i I have to do this online. So if you're an ethical sponsor who has an ethos, who has a vision, uh, who has a great product service to deliver, to, to offer, please get in touch with me, kd at kvandavani.com or hello at thetotalconnector.com. Please follow me on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, handle is kvandavani. On Telegram, there are two groups for, for example, Austrian Vienna meetups, uh, Bitcoin meetups only. It's called, uh, it's called Total Bitcoin meetup and the other one it's called slash uh, uh telegram uh, both uh the total connector it's one word or total bitcoin meetup you can also follow me on you know subscribe to my youtube channel uh, slash cave and the youtube slash uh, youtube.com slash c uh slash cave and the and yeah you can also follow me on facebook twitter linkedin uh, instagram uh, it's also slash Kevin Avani. So thank you so much for your support. Thanks so much for listening and for sharing this content. And um, together we can make this evolution, this monetary revolution happen. And that is called Bitcoin. Thank you.
Thank you so much and have a great weekend. Bye.